to that shit, you start asking for a bunch of rides from drunk drivers, just fuck it. <laughs> My friends are starting to catch on to that. They're like, Carlos, if you want to crash so bad, why don't you drive? And I tell them, are you fucking kidding me? The drunk driver is the one motherfucker that always survives. <laughs> That's why we have DUIs in the first place. See, because if we lived in a world where everybody except the drunk driver always lived, they wouldn't even call it a DUI. they just call it, hey man, I really hope you make it back okay. <laughs> so uh, on the ride over, to bump that probability up just a little bit more, I'll start fucking with the driver. Like, hey, hey, I think you just got a text. You should probably read that. <laughs> no, right now it's sounded important. <laughs> or, uh, look man, I know you're on your second strike and everything, but I think that squad car is trying to race you. You gonna take that shit? You pussy. I want to acknowledge the uh, the best theme of tonight's uh, comics, which was uh, Benji's theme of uh, "fuck this joke." All my jokes are shit. <laughs> Buy my T-shirt. <laughs> it worked. It worked. No comics are broke. Pori Kaika over there. Can only afford half of his pants, <laughs> jeans fucking tattered and shit. Tommy's about to go prospect for gold after the set. Man. <laughs> I'm no better, man. I, I went to go donate blood today, and it wasn't to be a good person or anything. It was just to be able to get drunk for cheap, man. <laughs> I swear I heard a fucking baby from the back of this bar. I don't know if I'm the only one. Uh, but the baby wouldn't be the worst thing in tonight. Sorry. It's all of us. It, it's us. It's the comics. That's the worst thing in this bar. Um, I know that gay marriage is a really divisive issue in this country, but what if you're not sure if you believe in gay marriage or not? Does that make you a fagnostic? <laughs> well, that joke's too controversial. I don't want to press that many buttons. Uh, so instead, I'm just going to compare black people and Mexicans. See, I think it's really funny the way that black people are always like, run, run, it's the police. And Mexicans are always like, corre, corre, es la policia. So different, you guys. Just different cultures. <laughs> or the way that uh, black people always get big blocks of government cheese. Mexicans always get big blocks of government cheese with a fucking jalapeno on top. <laughs> By the way, I think it's completely unfair that minorities get advantages with things like affirmative action while white people have to scrape by with things like inheritance, health insurance. God, I hate white people. And by white people, I mean Jews and Asians. Uh, is it racist that I don't trust Mexicans of Valley Park my car? Or is it racist that as a Mexican I'm too broke and lazy to afford valet parking? Or a car, really. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys remember this TV show, board game, it was everywhere back in the day. Where in the world is Carbon San Diego? Yeah? I fucking love that game, man. It was my uh, favorite game. I played it throughout my entire childhood. Uh, only, like I said, I am Mexican, so I had to play the knockoff version. Uh, it was called, We're in San Diego, it's Carmen. Uh, to be honest with you guys, my mom's name was Carmen. I never actually found her. <laughs> don't, don't, aw oh, man, these are jokes, these are jokes. None of this is real, dude. Like the Easter Bunny, or love. <laughs> Speaking of love, uh, I think that Pussy is a lot like a favorite TV show. 
uh, when it's fresh and new to you, you love it, you want it to be renewed next season. But after a couple of years, it starts to get old and predictable. And you think, sure, I don't want it to get canceled. I've already invested so much time into this. But at least I had a new cast member or something. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I am uh, single. Uh, not the best looking guy, I know that. So I have to do whatever I can to increase the odds in my favor, you know, any advantages I can do. One small little change I've been making is uh, instead of any normal white or black socks, I've been using these dress socks. Uh, tonight I'm rocking the fancy orange. Yeah, got to do anything. Yeah, um, I do it to increase, uh, to, to give women a false sense of security. So that they're like, oh, you know, maybe he's gay. And if I talk to him, nothing will happen. And that's when I go like, ha, wrong bitch. Now you have to use plan B tomorrow. Because fuck condoms, right guys? Yeah, we have penicillin for a reason. Uh, so, I want to open up a strip club. Not for the naked women. You can find those online. Uh, no, uh, I have a darker plan. Uh, I want to open up a strip club to play the most sentimental stripper music there is and traumatize them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want to get them up there, get them nice and loose with either like a, a cherry pie or every rose has its thorn. And once they're comfortable and that second song comes on, I throw on Luther Vandross's Dance With My Father. Just have a bunch of strippers running out the stage with tears streaming down their <laughs> eyes because that shit brought back all those daddy issues. That's my plan. How's it going, kitchen? What's up? <laughs> so, uh, women, uh, they, they like going to the gay clubs because they know that they're safe there. You know, the, the gay guys don't want all that stuff, all those, those nasty bits. No. So they can go, they can and dance and shake what their mama gave them. And I, I, I see where you're coming from, uh, because I kind of do the same thing, uh, only uh, I go to any club, because I know that that's where like nobody's gonna hit on me either. So I do that. <laughs> Although I, I did go for the original, and I, I went to a gay club as well. And let me tell you, those were some very nice compliments. I will say that. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know how many of you guys uh, heard the news or are connected to that internet, but uh, the biggest news story last week was the, the leak of all the celebrity news photos. You guys hear about that? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the best part of that for me was uh, the fact that it actually made national news. It was on all these channels, CNN and shit, 24-hour news networks, where they repeat the same story every 45 minutes. They're like, uh, unfortunately, we have to inform everybody that there was a severe breach of security and all these celebrities had their nude photos leaked in, in a horrible, morally wrong uh, thing online. I mean, can you believe that somebody would take these private pictures and just show them to everybody in the world? Like, pictures like this one. Can you believe that poor girl has to know that her picture is up for the world to see? Have you seen this one too? Oh my God, this is morally incomprehensible. This is so wrong. Who would do something like that? Show some respect to these ladies. We'll be back in three, or once the commercial breaks over. You find me more of those or you're fucking fired. Back in three, two, one, up. So fortunately, they didn't release any more pictures. No, you're fucking done. I told you you were done. Uh, but to recap, uh, there was a, a nude photo leak and it's so wrong. Who would put these up for the world? I mean, the details that you can see, like you in the back. Can you believe somebody would do something like that? I know I'm not the only one who saw it. Uh, speaking of ladies, I do want to uh, give a joke to the ladies tonight. Uh, there's not many, but this is for you. I, I was walking, thank you. You're going to regret that, thank you. <laughs> 
So I, I was walking around the other day and somebody stopped, walked me, uh, stopped me in the middle of the street and they asked me like, hey Carlos, is it true that you're willing to eat a girl's ass out during sex? I told them, well, look at me. Clearly I'm willing to eat anything. <laughs> so why not eat a girl's ass out during sex? And they said, are you serious? And I said, no. Not mayonnaise. <laughs> that shit's disgusting. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Uh, it's my favorite quote to live by. It's by the existentialist Kierkegaard, great thinker. It goes like this. Weigh yourself before and after taking a dump. And if that number's ever the same, you'll know your shit is meaningless. Thank you very much. My name is Carl. Thank you, Daddy. Yeah, give a big hand for Carl, man. That was great. That was funny, man. Uh, I just want to give you guys a couple.